So here, here we are with uh, Ernie McNaught. We're at PalCon, Nampa, Idaho, Northwest Nazarene University. And my name's Chris Bean. I'm the campus mission director. And I'm overseeing or helping to network and coordinate our ministries to university campuses, college campuses, um, secular campuses, you know, not our Nazarene schools, not Christian colleges typically. Um, but, you know, places like Boise State University in this area, or University of Cincinnati, where I'm a campus minister. And uh, so I just had the privilege of meeting Ernie McNaught, and um, it was... 1976 that I went to headquarters, joined the youth department staff, with the assignment of campus ministries okay. director. Now, they justified that by making me the editor of Etc. Magazine way back there, a magazine to young adults. I wondered how you convinced them to fund that position. Well, after I got there, then it was like, why don't you take over Etc. Okay. I'm like the salesman that, you know, said, I, I, didn't, know what, well, I didn't know how to spell salesman, now I am. <laughs> One. Not yes. our one. Well, so so I was an editor and I didn't even get good grades. In but anyway, I had a good time. Oh, that's good. That that's was a good time. So it was just trying to uh, figure out: is there any way to reach the students from Nazarene churches that ended up on college campuses? Was was kind of our initial approach. Yeah, yeah. Because if you could tap into that, I thought. And then the world, you know, you get some of them saved and then they go back to the world. And so I thought the quickest way to reach the world is to the university campus. That's kind of what I want. Yeah, there's thousands and thousands of international students on the campuses that are right in our backyards. Some of our churches. So it is so great to meet you and to know that there's been a history in our church of people trying to reach college and university campuses and students. And... Um, I know that, well you were you were telling me also, you know we talked about Wes and Judy Meisner who had started one of the first Nazarene student ministries I think. Before it was really recognized as a denominational thing, they were they were there yeah. in, in uh, Stillwater. Yeah. And then tell me of what was Brazil Fellowship? Well, before I got there, way back in the history of the church, there was an attempt to develop ministries to secular campuses. And they called it Brazil Fellowship. Okay. And uh, so that was the basis that Mel McCauley used to resurrect that, try to resurrect that. But just like now, there wasn't much to go on from Brazil Fellowship that existed. Yeah, so you had to kind of reinvent. Campus ministries when I was there, you know, it went, but not much left yeah. because it's it's a difficult yeah. thing. So Mel McCullough was the general NY director yes. at the time? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I, I guess it, they transitioned from being NYPS, Nazarene Young People's Society, to the NYI, Nazarene Youth International. And now we're under that umbrella of ministry again in the, in the global church, or in the USA, Canada yeah. Um, yeah. region. Interesting. Well, it is a pleasure to meet you and just to know that there's a history, there's been a lot of people that we're, you know, we're building on foundations that you've already laid a few blocks of that here and there and other people have come along and tried to do that and, and we're just going to keep plugging away at it and trying to build this ministry to reach college students. We believe I, it's I important. Think, I think, Chris, what I would say is that I, I grew up in Nampa, Idaho, Nazarene Mecca, the Northwest, when Nampa was 18,000 people. Huh. We might have had one black person in town. I ended up in New York City with Paul Moore and the Manhattan Project and the starting of all of that. And that's when McCullough approached me to come to headquarters because I obviously was in a culture that was not Church of the Nazarene <laughs> in that Jesus people movement. Yeah. And so here I am, trans uh, tracing all over the country on college campuses, hanging out in their student union, uh, you know, trying to meet students. And I, I, the reason I say that is, God has an amazing way to use people that don't think they're qualified. 
because I had no background. I mean, I grew up in Nazarene Mecca, the Northwest, and secular campus, but it just fascinated me, the potential. And the people that I met, and they were, they, they, they're good people that want to do something significant in the world. Why isn't the church? Yeah. I led while I was there the, the team to the uh, Summer Olympics in Montreal. Oh, wow. And went and recruited students. Because there's again the gathering of the world, and I, but I, I that's all I, <laughs> I could think so you of. You were kind of really pushing into multicultural kinds of ministry and didn't know like that. And not, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know what to call it, I didn't know what that's what you're doing. Stumbling but, into those sorts of things, sometimes, yeah, it was, ministries it's like that. Fascinating, <laughs> fascinating existence. I, I had a good time. So. Yeah, let me ask you one last question. Um, so, over the years of your involvement with ministry to campuses, what would you say were some of the most effective or the most um, productive or, or strategies to reach a campus? What would you tell a church that is close to a campus and they're just trying to figure out what, what do we do? I th uh, good question. <laughs> I, I think it, it comes down to the local church leadership getting over the fact that they have it. their only mission is to build that local church. Because the university students are only going to be there three or four years. If they could enlarge their vision to say, we invest three or four years, and then 20 years we'll, they'll come back and say, it was because you loved me and cared for me that I'm out over in wherever. I went home and I'm still serving. But that's a hard thing to get a local church to see. Past, and the pastor, you know, it's not just this local church, center, but I have the opportunity to influence leaders from around the world that are at our doorstep. But that's a hard transit. But I think if they if yeah. they could catch that, move past the thing that it's just our local church, and these kids, they won't ever pay time. How can we spend time for them? You know, they, they, they're not very dependable. If they have something else to do, we can only go. But if, if you, if a church would love them and build a relationship with them, to say we believe you are potential world changers, it would really. Be, but that's a tough transition. <laughs> well, we're we're excited to to pick up where you know Ernie and others have left off to build this ministry. Uh, we call it Campus Mission. Um, you can go to thecampusmission.org and find out more information about that.